Hey guys, so last weekend I played in my local store championship and I ended up becoming first place and getting my Lurking Assailant card. Uh, I ended up playing uh, Water Ally Xander deck. I think this deck is really, really strong and I kind of wanted to just show a deck profile, go a little bit more in depth explaining why I think this deck is really, really good. I think it's a top contender this format. Um, the reasons why you should play it, how you should play it, and quick rundown of what I played. So. Without wasting any more time, let's just go right into the profile. So to start off, we played for allies, we played three Nia. Uh, you get to play Nia now since we're playing Xander, which is pretty nice. Uh, when you play her, you get to look at your opponent's memory, and you get to declare any card in the game, not just what's in their memory, and it costs one more. This is really nice for all the decks that are trying to hit level three. You can just declare their level one or their level two. Usually their level two is pretty impactful to hit. Uh, they're not going to be able to go into it. If you call their level 3, it's rough because if they dungeon guide into it, it gets around Nia. So calling it on level 2 is hard because if they dungeon guide to 2, they get around the Nia cost, but then they still have to go to 3, which costs 3. So it's uh, I like calling it on the level 2. And then versus ally decks, you can call either their level 1 if you think they're going to go into it, and if they don't, you can just end up calling their most impactful card in their hand, like Gildas or some piece of interaction which makes their hand awkward. And just having a 1-3 body with stealth once you're level 1 is actually like pretty decent. <clears throat> it ends up being pretty annoying for your opponents to out, since everything with True Sight usually does 2 damage and it's hard for them to get more than 1 on the field. And then I played 4 Dungeon Guide. You play this just because you play the Scepter and it helps you push damage. Uh, the 1-3 body is like okay. Um, it's just for the Scepter damage. In matchups where you're like in an ally mirror, this is usually what I take out. Uh, I don't like... Uh, rushing dungeon guide because if they're able to live like prevent some of your attack damage and then this is like you never want to be activating this unless it's game and it comes up a lot less in ally matchups which is the main reason why i like signing it out you usually need to go slow with them you don't usually get pushes like that and then on to the more general allies that i play so we have the four trappers four snow fairy um these are obviously amazing so uh, the Trapper doubles in this deck for just giving you a prep counter. So you can play this card a little bit more aggressively than you can in a normal Water Ally deck. Because if you lose, like let's say you play a 2-3 and then him, and you swing 2 to trade with one of their 2-3s, you don't necessarily care if they go to kill this, because now you still have your 2-3 and then you have your prep counter for your attack cards later, which is actually like pretty decent. Uh, and then Snow Fairy is just amazing. It's very, very good in Ally ally mirrors and just turning off like hasties you get to ignore them or shield mates and then for our balanced allies we have four gildas and two lunette um i just played two lunette because realistically you don't want to see it past turn one it, it just gets a lot worse and if you're not playing its allies this card's value really goes down uh, and then gildas is just insane um, there are times where you just win the game off the spot off of lunette but Honestly, the better people get with ally decks, the more removal they play, the more water, or wind, even wind. It's just, this card's getting less and less powerful, so I'd consider cutting it, but, I mean, there are games where you're able to keep it alive and you just win solely because off of it. I then played, now just do the, two, all the two threes, it's four Frostworn, four Lurking, and then three Esteem Knight and two Sharpshooter. Uh, I just had five slots, so... Like, these don't necessarily matter. The only reason you're supposed to play different names is if they Dream Fairy like this, you can still play this instead of playing like four and one. Um, they were they were all right. I mean, obviously, like Lurking is insane and Frostward's pa Paladin is absolutely nuts. Um, you know, the two, three bodies are all right. They're just big, do a lot of damage. They're difficult for your opponent to trade with. They're really nice. And now off to the attack cards that i played this is like one of the big reasons to play this deck is you get to play four thieving cut so thieving cut being a two cost attack card that comes in for three which trades with all of their opponent's allies and then replaces itself by preparing is insane this card is i wish i could play so many more copies of this card it is so 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 good every hand that you see this it feels super high value uh, it's it's honestly an amazing card uh, and then we played 4 Drown Cut. Honestly, this card underperformed a little. I just don't know what I would replace it with. It just... This deck doesn't normally need the floating after 1. So the floating feels a little redundant. I mean, obviously with like the Frostworm Paladin, it's insane. But 
that doesn't always come up. Uh, the two attack for one is like all right because then you can like use it and then keep enough for interaction even under like a water trinket. But I can see myself cutting this card in the future. But during the tournament, it still did pretty good. It helped me trade with allies very well. Having an attack card instead of allies sometimes is nice because your opponent won't be expecting it and they won't like, respect it. And now moving on to the interaction that we play. So I just play four Deflecting Edge, four Frostbind, I play four Freezing Hail, three Fracture Eyes, and three Song of Frost. So to go over all these, uh, Deflecting Edge is amazing. Just being a norm card that only costs one, your opponent like it's it's really hard to respect this card because three damage is so much in attack and it only costs one they don't have the trinket for it. it this card is honestly awesome i really like playing deflecting edge in these ally decks uh frostbind obviously that card is just insane you're able to get a lot of high value out of it it gets you a lot of out of a lot of si sticky situations where your opponent hits like level three there's playing like high value cards or like against erupting decks it makes their math all messed up and then fracturize since you're playing water you have to play this card like this card isn't very good against allies and against some even some of the level three matchups it feels pretty bad but interrupting it's like mandatory and then lorraine decks you know it's really nice merlin but it's hit or miss it's an easy side out in certain matchups if you play different things to respect like if you play uh, morgan in the side you know for the anti heal you could just side this out it's pretty decent and then uh freezing hail I, I really like freezing hail the more i play this card the more i like it uh, the two damage in a spell is really nice and the not waking up is also cool uh trading for like a dream fairy or a snow fairy is really cool uh, i i'm honestly liking this card the more i play it <clears throat> and so that is the main deck uh, i'm gonna move on now to the material which is gonna be the big reason as to why you want to play a xander list instead of like a tony that you might have been seeing or maybe like a water of rain so moving on to the material we have our water spirit our xander one two and three you only really play the three and the in realistically even the two just because you play scepter uh scepter with dungeon guide or just being able to hard level doing the damage is insane uh, a lot more people are respecting scepter and playing the uh the amulet but that's what another nice thing for fracturize is you can fracturize their amulet and then still do display and it puts a floating in your grave which is really nice so uh i've been liking it i've been liking playing all these and the level one of xander is actually really nice getting your prep counter and fixing your hand or you're fixing your draw, I should say. Uh, the Xander 2, I I don't think it came up. It came up in testing to just make this card when I didn't have Scepter, where this got removed already, just to grab like something from the graveyard. Uh, a Thieving Cut, play it and draw. Like If you have one floating, and you're just basically paying one for the Thieving Cut, which will then replace itself, it, it all feels very nice. The Xander 2 is very good. The Xander 3 for its effect never came up. It was just for Scepter. And now for... The real reason why we end up playing this deck is the Poison Dagger. So this is the reason why you play this. Into the level 3 matchups, you basically just go turn 1 Spirit, turn 2 this, turn 3 Xander, and then you just go, okay, I'm going to ping you, and then with my allies, I'm going to threaten, like let's say you have 2 2 threes and a Snow Fairy. You're threatening 3, 6, 7, 8, 9 with this damage. Just it's It's a really, really big momentum swing. It can help you close out games against these decks that are playing super defensive. Like if you think of the Diana list that we've been seeing or the Xander list, if they're just being super, super defensive, this can give you like your one turn that you know is going to go through. You play this and that's it. And it's also interesting if you're able to like play this and you need to set up your board a little bit more and you play this. Uh, a lot of people are playing removal for your scepter because everybody knows how broken this card is. If you end up playing two, it, they're less likely to see two. And they have to pick one and most of the time it doesn't really matter which one you see as long as you see one of these or have access to one of these you're going to end up winning the game because it just pushes so much damage now onto the utility cards i play the ring the fire and the water bobble uh i didn't play the wind bobble just because i didn't think i'd end up seeing it and at my locals i didn't end up uh my matchups were all it was all erupting it was re-erupting a xander and an ally deck uh, the ally deck was water. Yeah, it was a water Diana. So I didn't end up seeing wind. It, it didn't end up mattering that I had the wind in the side. But you just... You don't really have room for the last one. Because uh, I ended up valuing... Like, Terrifying is really good. You have to play Nullifying. I, I respect a lot of 
erupting. I think erupting is really, really, really strong right now. Uh, and then sword of seeking. This card came up in testing, just being able to apply more damage. Because if you have the poison dagger and then you can play this, this is like two, and it it threatens a little bit more. And then like it's something you can fracturize and not feel bad about in a matchup where uh, maybe you side out of this later. It, it just came up a few times in testing, and I thought instead of playing a win, I could play this. And it ended up, I think I made it twice in the tournament, so it, not that bad. I think if I found something else I'd like, I might end up playing it. Might end up cutting this. I was thinking about putting Tithe in the main. Tithe might not be that bad. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty back and forth. And then now onto my side deck. I ended up playing three Song of Nurturing, so I wanted to end up testing this. Normally in ally decks, I like playing four Seeking Shot in the side. Uh, Seeking Shot in the ally matchups is like obviously insane, and I feel like I respect the level three decks enough in the main with the Nias and the Dungeon Guides that I don't really need to play anymore in the side deck other than like Regalia. So Song of Nurturing, it's the same logic as Deflecting Edge, where it's a norm card that gets around Trinket that helps you keep your allies alive. And two health across the board is a lot. It really changes the math for a lot of things. It just makes it so in ally mirrors, it's basically impossible for them to trade really well. And spells, Innervate Fury, it protects really, really well into that. Making your guy have five, if you have like two, two, threes, and they have five, like they're just only killing one, which you're really happy about. I honestly, I didn't see this card in the tournament at all, but in testing, this performed really well. So it's kind of unfortunate. I don't know how it would have done I mean, I only saw a lot of Erupting decks, and against Erupting, it feels a little weird putting this in. Uh, I'd, like, consider it over Deflecting Edge, but, you know, Firing Momentum and stuff. It's it's back and forth. I would say it's more personal preference if you think your opponent's going to be more aggressive into the Lorraine side, but you think they're playing a lot more ally removal, you could play this. Uh, at my personal locals, they were playing more aggressive, so the Deflecting stayed in. And now for the rest of my side... I played Orbit Choking Fumes, Safeguard Amulet, Tithe Proclamation, uh, Water Trinket, and then the Wind Bobble. So the Wind Bobble and the Water Trinket, I play again. You know, they were really nice. Uh, Tithe Proclamation, also a very good card. I, I really enjoy playing this. And then Safeguard. You know, you gotta respect your Merlins. You gotta respect the, your uh, Eruptings. Like, this card is really nice. And the Water Mirrors. Like, all these cards felt really, really clean. I just personally, I think it was a mistake playing the Orbit Choking Fumes. This card, in theory, my, my logic was if you have Floating Engrave, you can convert it into a draw, and it's a pretty decent interruption into any matchup. But it never really came up. It, it never There was never a matchup where I think I would side this in, and it would be more impactful than going into like a Safeguard, a Tithe, or like one of your Bobbles, or even the Sword. I just never saw a scenario where that would realistically happen. It's so niche. I think this card can be definitely be replaced for other things like the posing poison coating oil it's not bad or eye of argus isn't that bad i, I definitely play those over this I, I think this is pretty this is pretty cope uh, i never ended up signing it in but everything else uh, these were really really nice and i think these can come up in ally mirrors i just need to test more whether i like seeking shot or the song nurturing is better so yeah that is the deck profile now I just kind of want to explain why I think this deck really is the move. I, I think if you're going to play an ally deck, I think you should either be playing a win version, uh, just like a win Lorraine or a win, uh, win Tony, or this. Uh, and I'm really, really leaning towards this deck. Uh, the Poison Dagger is just insane. So if you're going turn one Poison Dagger and then you have like Scepter, especially if it's a Water Mirror and you're able to do this and then free cast this and threaten next turn doing this. It, it's too much. This is it's way too much pressure for your opponent to handle. They don't. They're not going to be able to fracturize both of them. And if they do, they're basically skipping their turn, which is really really nice. So, uh, but this into Luxem Xander, it's extremely important. It, it helps you get through the curves. Like if they're spamming you with Resolute, if they're spamming you with uh, Luxem Sites, this can help you break the threshold that you need to do enough damage for game. Uh, Diana, same thing. They're not going to be able to stall out the game. They're not going to be able to level quick enough. This will help you put through the threshold. And playing the Nia is honestly really, really nice. Uh, Nia being able to get the read on what your opponent's trying to do based off of their hand. It's honestly very, very strong. And I think it's a big reason to be playing this deck. Thieving Cut, it's 
it's probably the best piece of removal in this deck. Like just being able to back up your allies, uh, swinging face with them, being super aggressive, and then just going, okay, now I'm going to use one card to trade into your ally and then just go even off of it. It's it's honestly really, really nice. And then three, honestly, there were times where I would Thieving Cut, Dungeon Guide with Scepter, grab this back, and then i just threaten it again next turn to get my draw again to do three more damage, which would pretty much always be game next turn if they didn't respect. So like, it's really, really, really strong. And I think it's a good reason to play it. Uh, the reasons to play the, the Water Tony, which is what I played at Nationals, uh, instead of this is like, oh, into a an ally mirror. You can go level one Tony, and it's basically like a second type, uh, or not type proclamation. It's like a second Terra Frank. That is cool. And you also get like access to Heavy Swing. But in ally mirrors, you don't want Heavy Swing. You'd rather have this. And then this is a Heavy Swing, but it's in your material deck, which is awesome. Yeah, so the reason you would pick Tony is because you have two Terra Frings, but if you're using this efficiently and then you're able to use your allies and control the game because you're playing water, I think you don't necessarily need your level 1 Tony. You can go Xander and then just be aggressive with your Poison Dagger. And yeah, I think that is those are the big reasons to play this deck. You just, you're not going to be able to be stalled out by your level 3s, and you can just play Poison Dagger and be super, super aggressive. I think maybe the last thing I might have to say is... Just be mindful of when your opponent might be playing trinket uh you know keeping enough cards like if you if your board state is good enough you don't really need to be committing it committing to it anymore you can hold up your defensive spells like these and just holding up five so that way even if, if they go into your trinket you can still activate these if you have five in hand uh being mindful of things like that will help you succeed with this deck because this deck is extremely rewarding the more you practice with it the more rewarded you'll be with this deck this deck can really this deck can do anything. All the water ally decks are extremely, extremely versatile. They can adapt to any matchup that you're playing against, and they will do very, very well. So yeah, that's all I got for you guys. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed, and yeah, I'll see you next time.